Hi, my name is Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. My main thing is helping you as a side hustler, a solopreneur, and also a non-traditional entrepreneur. Today we're going to talk about Vin Nan Han. He passed away recently. He's a Buddhist monk that I've been following for a while. Shout out to my partner uh, who actually got this book several years ago, No Mud, No Lotus. It sat on her shelf for a little while. I grabbed it off her shelf. Thank you for letting me borrow it for a little while. It's been on my shelf for a little while now too. And it was pivotal as far as helping me on my journey. Uh, he passed away uh, around loved ones. I believe he was in his 90s. Um, so he lived quite a life. Uh, you might be familiar with his work if you're into Buddhism or spiritualism. You might've heard his quotes about uh, being fully present. Even when you're washing dishes, that could be a spiritual experience. I hate washing dishes, so it was pivotal when I uh, was cleaning up after my two little ones when they're much literal, 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 much smaller. And it was a trying time for me uh, many years ago. If you're familiar with my work, you know I'm the primary caregiver of my two kids, now eight and five. But it's been a long journey to this point, and it did not have help me with that journey. So I'm going to share one of my favorite quotes from him. It actually applies to your business. Again, as a side hustler, a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. If you like content like this, if you feel like this will help you on your journey, please subscribe. It's always free here at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. If there's other people in your life who you think will be able to, uh, to uh, get a lot more out of this and uh, would enjoy having these conversations about uh, insight and strength and emotional intelligence, particularly when it applies to your business or where you're pivoting, be sure and share this video with them. Again, it's always free. And I'm hitting 200 episodes this week, so I am geeked. And thank you for being part of this journey. Be sure to share with others and make sure that you can help them, just like hopefully I'm helping you. All right, my favorite quote from the man, Thin Nan Han. There's a lot of favorite quotes of his. I highly recommend this book. I actually quote it quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit. I don't know what I'm saying. Quite a bit in my book, uh, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, Nourish the World, which came out about a year ago. So you see some quotes from him. But it's actually a quote that <clears throat> I don't believe actually got into the book, but it's one of my favorite quotes from, from his book, which came out several years ago. I highly recommend you get it. Here's what he says. When I was a young monk, I believe that it took a long time to get any type of insight. The truth is, there are insights that can come right away. You don't need to practice eight years or 20 years in order to wake up. I love this for so many different reasons. Um, I'm a coach, to, I've coached hundreds of people at this point. Again, the not traditional entrepreneurs, people who are pivoting, people who are remixing their career. As I talk about my new book, Career Remix, and this conversation has come up so much. Am I ready? I'm not ready yet. When this happens, when that happens, I'll be ready. Damon, how do I get ready? There's two really good things about this quote as far as you being ready right now. Number one, you have experience, just not at this new thing. Whatever you've experienced in your life, even if you're my kid's age, it's applicable to the next thing. No time is wasted. Um, I call it the cutting room floor that I've talked about in, in previous Bring Your Worth episodes where you have this cutting room floor of all these ideas that you might have not seen any use for. Just like a director who's getting rid of the extra footage, but then you do the director's cut where you can have a new experience and suddenly that stuff that you're ready to scrap, that you consider to waste, that you might feel guilt or shame about as Brene Brown might talk about, those very things might be the things to help you get to the next level. We just happen to throw them away. It reminds me a lot of seeing my kids play with Lego. The patience and the time it takes to, to build something in Legos, which it does take quite a bit of patience, that patience, that strategy can make you really good in, say, the stock market. It can make you really wise when it comes to actual architecture later. It can make you a great founder because you're developing the patience and a long-term strategy to figure out what you're trying to build, the grit and determination to finish it, and the patience to understand the big picture of everything, which you need to oscillate between the little picture, the details, and the big picture, your vision. You can take what you've learned from one particular practice and apply it to something else. As Sin Nan Han talks about, you don't need to go and when you do a career remix, when you're building something new, you don't need to start from scratch. You're never gonna start from scratch. Wherever you are, wherever you, wherever you go, Wherever you go, wherever I am, wherever you go, there you are. So you're going to be taking that stuff with you, right? Me, 
as an African American man, me approaching middle age, me being a parent, me being a four times head speed, me being a crochet, me being a journalist for going on 30 years or so. I bring that wherever I go. So if I start a new venture right now, I'm going with all those identities and more. In fact, identities that I probably have forgotten about. So you're not starting from scratch when you remix or do something new. You're actually just bringing stuff, your old toolbox, to the new venture. That gives you a sense of confidence to begin starting. Second of all, once you understand that you don't need to study something for a lifetime, you start to build from now. As I talk about in my book from a year ago, build from now. That's why it's called that. With a lot of the, the clients that I work with, one of the challenges that we'll have is that they're waiting for a sign to move forward. They're waiting for a moment where it's going to get easy. But as Seth Godin says, waiting until tomorrow isn't gonna make it easier. Once you accept that, you're gonna get started. There's folks who um, are waiting to get their PhD before they start doing their venture or their particular study. I need to get this one extra degree and then I'll be ready to go. I'll wait until the kids get out the house, you know, which in my case is like a decade from now. I'm gonna wait till the kids get out the house and then suddenly I'm gonna be taken off and taking my career seriously. I'm gonna wait till I get this amount of money and then I'm gonna start my venture. The flagpole is always moving though, number one. We just don't realize it. It's like a slow moving thing where I need $500. Well, no, I really need $1,000. Oh no, I need $2,000 to start my venture. I got my bachelor's. Well, let me get my master's. Well, no, let me do this fellowship. Well, let me get my PhD. I'll wait till the kids go to school. Wait, they're in school? Well, I'm still pretty busy. I'll wait till they get to high school. Oh, they're still in high school? All right, well, let me go and wait till they get to college. It becomes this infinite game. One of the biggest pieces of advice I got from an old friend of mine um, back when I was working on Cuddler, the startup I did with two co-founders, we bootstrapped it. It became um, a phenomenon that particular year. It became the number one app in the Apple App Store in 2014. We had a quarter million users. We were in the cover of the Wall Street Journal. It was a wonderful experience, very intense, particularly considering I just became a father to our first child. And so I was taking care of a baby in one arm and running a company with another one. And we ended up selling the company about a year after we launched. Around the time that my son had turned two. Me deciding to move forward with it though, I was scared. Because number one, I was first time father. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing over here. But I also was a first time founder. In fact, it was a second time founder, but it was the first time doing a startup of that magnitude. I did one other startup a year before that, but it was much smaller. And it definitely wasn't as popular. And a friend of mine at the time said, <coughs> If you wait till everything's perfect, you wait till everything feels good, then you're probably too late. In other words, if I waited till, um, if we waited until the app was absolutely perfect, which was called Cuddler, it connected people for hugs, we barely knew what the hell we were doing. So the app was pretty rough when it came out and it became an instant hit. Like within the first week, we had 100,000 users. If we waited until things were perfect, we would have missed that cultural wave. But then on a personal level, if I waited until my kid was a little bit older, well, guess what? We had another kid about a year after that, <laughs> shortly after shortly after I sold Cuddler, then I found out we were gonna have another baby. So then if I waited for that, then there'd be another kid. If I waited for that moment, you and I would not be talking now. <laughs> I wouldn't have done anything. I think that's what Thin Nan Han is saying, is that you have everything you need. I talk about that in my new book, uh, career Remix, get the gig you want based on the skills you got. It's available everywhere now. We just had the launch, so thank all of y'all who are supporting it. It's available on all the platforms now and audiobook soon. But but that's why the subtitle is called that. Get the gig you want based on the skills you got. As we go through the Great Resignation, um, as I record this, we're still sheltering in place to a certain extent. Going to the third year of this pandemic in a few weeks, which is crazy. It's intense. The time is now. Waiting isn't going to help. And there's certain things, if we go back to say 2018, 2019, the years before the pandemic, certain things we could have done then that we literally can't do now. So if a lot of those things that we could have started back then, now we can't start them. And I won't even get into the bigger life, life philosophy as far as time and life being short. Get that shit done now. I think that's what Thin Knots Han is saying. Blessings to him. I'm getting tears in my eyes because I love his work so much. Blessings to him and his family, chosen and otherwise. And uh, yeah, he really helped us on this journey. 
If you want more insight, you can uh, subscribe to the Bring Your Work channel. I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 30 a.m. Pacific time, Vegas time. Uh, we're approaching 200 episodes. So if you're new to the show, you can binge it like some Netflix. <laughs> I've talked about uh, Brene Brown. I've talked about um, Adam Grant. I've talked about um, Simon Sinek. I've talked about Oprah. I've talked about Beyonce even. There's so many different lessons we can learn from so many different types of leaders, no matter what your ilk. And we're talking about emotional intelligence. We're talking about persistence and habits. Uh, we're talking about ways that you can remix your career. <coughs> We're talking about ways you can remix your career and make an even better, better world. Remember, there's a difference between your job, which is what you're hired to do, and your career, which is what you're meant to do. Until next time, remember that you can always bring your worth and you can build from now. Take care.